Yeah. So aliens. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, this is the thing that DMT volunteers uh, and I myself on DMT have repeatedly experienced encounters which, with what might be construed as aliens. Mm. As again, I'm handing a stick to my opponents to beat me with. Yeah. Uh, and so I would like to point out, and I went into this in, in depth in, in my book, uh, Visionary, now titled Visionary, used to be called Supernatural, um, that, that the experiences that shamans have with spirits, the experiences that people in the Middle Ages up until about the 1950s had with fairies and elves, and the experiences that people have with uh, aliens today, they're all the same experience construed through different cultural lenses. The, the details of the experience in every case are almost identical. They're, once you get down to the phenomenology and examine the exact experiences that are reported, it turns out that they're all the same experiences, just that different cultures construe them in different ways. And right now we're construing those encounters as encounters with aliens. Uh, well, certainly they are alien to this, this realm, but are they coming in spaceships or are they crossing into dimensional space or are they all within our minds somehow? Mark, the guy that you spoke to, did you put that episode out yet? Yes. With Rick Barnett, yeah. Yeah. So Mark spoke to a guy who claims to have been abducted. Oh, that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By yeah. aliens, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, And um, Jay King. Yeah, has he dabbled with um, psychedelics at all? I don't know. I don't. I asked him sort of like... Uh, peripherally? Yeah, peripherally, and he didn't really seem to... He didn't elect that information outright. I didn't press on He may it, be a natural overproducer of DMT. Uh, it's <laughs> notable that people in the Middle Ages were repeatedly reported being abducted by fairies. Uh, shamans are repeatedly abducted by spirits. Uh, shamans have sex with female spirits in the spirit world. Uh, alien abductees today have, um, have sex with aliens and often produce hybrid children. It was the case with fairies as well. Uh, it's the same thing. We're just viewing it through different cultural lenses. I, I think, hmm. and I, I think it's very useful to to analyze this experience if you if you look at these earlier examples of how it was how it was construed. Yeah, there were like ancient civilizations that spoke of the star people, or mm -hmm. like is that a version of There's that? There's a or? fascinating um, imagery on the second shrine of the tomb of Tutankhamun, uh, which is uh, in in the museum in in Cairo now. Uh, and what it is, it's a, it's a gold, the whole shrine is covered in gold. And on one side of it is an image of individuals who are in mummified form, but they're looking up at a star and rays from the star are coming down into their forehead, right into their forehead. Uh, and, and talk about star people and talk about the pineal gland. I mean, that's, that's, that's what it seems like. Mm. Uh, let's see if we can find Any it. of these perhaps? Um, the that's actually shrine? from the second shrine, but that's not the image I'm talking about. That that may be the image. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, uh, my sight's so shit. I can't yeah, see. Yeah, it's not a. It's not very high quality. No, that's not it anyway. Um, but but uh, it, the, anybody who searches f f far enough and spends enough time will find it. It's a it's a very famous very famous image, um, and there's this direct connection with the stars that that is manifested in that in that image. Hmm. So as far as global knowledge is concerned, all these ancient cultures building pyramids, building different mound structures, mm -hmm. connected to the stars in some capacity. I know it's been positive that there's ancient civilization that's potentially going around. Is it possible that it's just connection with psychedelics that occur naturally all over the earth mm -hmm. and even internally with us through holotropic breath yeah. that can give well, those revelations? My, my view on, on the a possible lost human civilization is first of all that that civilization, like all other civilizations on earth, emerged out of shamanism. Mm. Uh, and that psychedelics and the use of consciousness altering plants and fungi were fundamental to that shamanistic culture just as they were to every other shamanistic culture. But uh, it took a different direction from some other ones and, and became capable of navigating and exploring the earth at a, at a very, very early date and, yeah. and, and studied astronomy in an almost scientific sense. Do you think it's possible that this same experience happened to pre, what are we, homo sapien? We're so homo sapiens, yeah. Did it happen to, what were yeah. you bringing up earlier? Homo erectus, homo erectus Neanderthal. Neanderthals. Could they have also dabbled? Did I think they have the certainly, intellect? I think it certainly happened with Neanderthals. There's, there's uh, more and more evidence that cave art that was attributed to homo sapiens was actually done by Neanderthals. Mm. Wow. And it may be that the Neanderthals taught the ancestors of, of anatomically modern humans how to paint. That is, that is even possible. Uh, there's, 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 
very strong evidence now that wow. Neanderthals were doing cave art and the same geometric patterns and the same entities appeared there. They're not so different from anatomically modern humans. And anyway, they live on in us because there's so much Neanderthal DNA up to, up to you know, yeah, these may be some examples of Neanderthal cave art. But did Homo erectus, didn't, would, I think you mentioned that they were sailing? Or well, they, they certainly did sail because they got, um, they got, as far as I recall, even as far away as uh, some of the Pacific Islands, uh, wow. Micronesia, maybe even Aus New Guinea. Um, but the problem is we don't have any evidence from that, that period, apart from a few skeletal and fossil remains. Uh, the evidence for psychedelic use in cave art is fundamentally derives from the art itself. Yeah. That was why that was why I went to the Amazon to drink ayahuasca in 2003. I was I I thought I had finished my inquiry into the possibility of a lost civilization. I was wrong. I went back to it later because new evidence, particularly Gobek de Depi, came out. I was looking for a new subject that, that really interested me. Human origins interested me. And then the this sort of burst of symbolism and creativity that 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 occurs 100,000 years ago or, or less. Uh, and, th and that's when I started to look at cave art. Uh, and, and then I came across the work of a professor at the University of Witwatersrand in South Africa, David Lewis Williams. His neuropsychological model of cave art suggested that cave art was documenting experiences in deeply altered states of consciousness. And he made a strong case for that. Then I thought, okay, uh, let's look at cultures that are using deeply altered states of consciousness now. So I started looking at the Amazon and I came across an amazing book uh, written by Luis Eduardo Luna um, and, and uh, with paintings by Pablo Amaringo, an Amazonian shaman, uh, depicting his ayahuasca visions. And yeah, lo and behold, there were so many common points with the yeah. cave art. I'm a boots on the ground researcher. I can't write a book about something if I don't experience it. That's why I spent seven years scuba diving. So, you know, I said to Santa, we have to go to the Amazon and drink uh, <laughs> ayahuasca uh, if I'm going to write this book authentically. 